Um, so it was a few years ago when I was standing within um, the Ancient Egyptian Gallery at the Ashmolean Museum that I um, was confronted with this rather beautiful figurine. Um, standing around 30 centimetres tall, with her arms in a raised position, she just commands attention. Um, but for me, the most significant elements in her appearance were the abstract symbols decorated upon her body. They evoked endless questions as to what these symbols meant and the practices of body modification within ancient Egypt. Um, this intrigued me to such an extent that it became the subject of my undergraduate thesis last year, which focused on the de decorated female figurines and three examples of uh, preserved female bodies, which all displayed evidence of tattooing. Um, this is something that I'm also currently pursuing at my Masters. Um, while there are no known textual sources documenting the practice of tattooing, there is the ten tangible evidence. Um, so within this presentation, I will present the selection of figurines that show the body art and also the three case studies of tattooed <coughs> mummified remains. Um, there is uh, quite a lack of academic, academic study on this uh, topic. Um, but drawing upon this data presented, I'm going to argue that the practice of tattooing was undertaken with the purpose to protect and empower both the physical body and the figurines. So, um, as we know, the physical body is central to how we conduct our lives. The presentation, decoration and permanent modification of the body's surface matter to us. So this is something that Marilyn Strathairn clearly states by noting that the skin is the point of contact between the person and the world. It's for this very reason that inscriptions upon the skin communicate to and engage with other people, often provoking particular reactions, conveying social messages and expressing personal identity. The body is a fluid identity entity which is open to transformation and construction through modification. Different <coughs> cultures and societies throughout time have established different ways of thinking about and treating the body. However, these notions are not just restricted to the physical body, but also apply to surrogates of the body, such as figurines, which often provide even deeper insights. So these are just um, a few <coughs> of the uh, 14 decorated female figurines that I studied from the Ancient Egypt collections within the Ashmolean Museum and British Museum. And through the um, analysis of primary data, I found that there were recurrent themes of decorating particular parts of the body, such as the abdomen, the limbs, the wrists and the ankles. Um, so as you can see upon these, there are two types of decoration. There are incisions and there are painted decoration. Um, however, because I've kind of studied so many, I'm just going to focus on the two most significant ones and the painted symbols upon them. So this is the first figurine. Um, this pre-dynastic seated female is within the British Museum collection. Um, and she shows various uh, symbols painted upon the surface of her body. Her ankles and wrists are encircled with uh, lined and dotted patterns. Um, there is a hippopotamus tattoo, uh, painted upon the stomach, um, which also appears to be slightly swollen. And there is also a figurative scene of animals upon the upper back. Um, this uh, also shares similarity to the decoration on Nakad to pottery. However, more significant, um, is the decoration upon the wrists and ankles. Um, so these are encircled with decoration um, and looking at ethnographic studies really helped me to analyse these figurines and what the decoration may mean. So the Berber women of North Africa um, also tattoo their wrists and ankles in order to protect them <coughs> from evil spirits which attempt to enter the body through these points. Um, this encircling separates the feet and hands from the rest of the body and creates a division and a boundary between these body parts in order to protect the person. Um, in this sense, the tattoos are acting in a similar way to an amulet in warding off evil. Um, so it can be argued then that perhaps women within ancient Egypt also tattooed their wrists and ankles for these similar reasons. And this is just a representation of this practice. Um, so upon the stomach, um, the picture in the middle, there is a hippopotamus painted um, and we know that the goddess of childbirth and fertility is Tararet, who is a bipedal female hippopotamus with feline features. So this uh, painting upon the stomach could indicate 
that this is an early form of tarot to ensure protection, fertility and safe childbirth uh, due to the high infant and mother mortality rates within ancient Egypt at that time. There is also decoration upon the legs um, in a kind of zigzag style. It runs down the front and the sides of the thighs and legs and it may be no coincidence that the hieroglyph for water is also similar in this design. Um, so this symbol upon the thighs could have represented the Nile and its association as a life-giving source which is similar to the view that women are a life, uh, bearers of life. Um, as you can also see um, closer the ankles are encircled with the same uh, decoration as previously mentioned. So the second figurine um, is also dated to the pre-dynastic era. It's from the Ashmolean collection and it possibly belongs to the, to the Nakada one period. Um, there are a number of abstract symbols painted upon the surface of the body, which cover the chest, uh, the back, the abdomen and the limbs. Um, whilst the head and arms, well one arm, is uh, missing, we can still gather a lot of insight from this figurine. Um, so again, upon the abdomen there's a specific placement of decoration here, which could link to themes that I've already touched upon of fertility and childbirth. Um, also the colour of the pigment um, could relate to the colour of like Nile silt and the black was also the black pigment in ancient Egypt was seen as one linked to fertility. Um, the arms once again appear to be encircled and wrapped in decoration which indicates control of certain parts of the body and similarly um, upon the back there's more figurative decoration um, which appears to be animals but because it's quite poorly preserved it is difficult to um, interpret this. So these pre-dynastic figurines are significant because these provide evidence of the body decoration practices from a period where there is an absence of preserved human remains with these type, types of decoration. So this is the evidence through absence. Um, these pre-dynastic figurines have lasted through time in the way that pre-dynastic human remains have not. Um, whilst these figurines can be seen as surrogates for the physical body, physical human remains do provide an actual <coughs> account of the individual's life. From preserved bodies we can gather dietary information, health conditions and even their final meals. This data allows us to reconstruct their life and gain insights into the society they inhabited. So in relation to the evidence of tattoos upon pre preserved human remains, we can also form ideas about their social identities, status, beliefs and wider society. So I'm now going to um, show three examples of tattoos preserved upon ancient Egyptian mummified bodies. Um, and the upcoming slides are going to have images of human remains, so obviously if that makes anyone feel uncomfortable, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so this uh, first example is one of two mummies found within the mortuary temples at Deir el Bahari in 1891. So because of the time it was found in and also um, kind of the type of archaeology that was practiced at that time, um, there are a lack of images and also academic publication on both of these mummies so therefore it makes it quite difficult to study. So this first mummy does have evidence of tattooing upon the arms, navel and abdomen although this is the only known picture of it so it's only showing the abdomen. Um, the parallel lines and patterns consist of dots and dashes um, which is similar to ethnographic evidence from Iraqi indigenous groups in which women are tattooed upon their abdomen and navels to ensure safe childbirth. So this could obviously draw a comparison and indicate that maybe ancient Egyptian women were doing this for the same reasons. Um, there is also a lozenge shaped tattoo below the navel which is similar to the pre-dynastic seated figurine which had lozenges upon her upper body. Um, and also ethnographic evidence from Algeria shows that it is customary tattoo small lo lozenges upon the arms and forearms of women in order to protect them from the evil eye. So Bianchi um, argues that these tattoos are placed randomly upon the body, however this is something that I would kind of argue against because this looks like the very specific placement of these tattoos, especially since permanent marking upon the body is undertaken with intention um, and the similarities between the figurines and the mummies show the recurrent decoration of particular parts of the body. Um, so these symbolic tattoos can be viewed as forms of uh, permanent amulets which ensure eternal protection for the wearer. 
So this is the second example of a mummy from the same site. And this also shows a similar style of tattooing and also is one of the earliest um, examples of scarification upon the lower abdomen. Um, so the pr practice of tattooing around the navel and abdomen may have had both uh, magical and medicinal functions within ancient Egypt since uh, magic and medicine were intertwined. Additionally, these, uh, the sites that these two mummies were excavated from had a healing centre so this um, can be viewed as evidence of the importance of curative or medicinal practices. Um, again, since mortality rates were high in ancient Egypt, tattooing of uh, the abdomen may have been to increase fertility and ensure safe childbirth, and especially this could especially be the case since they were found in the context of the Temple of Hathor, who was the goddess of motherhood and gave birth to all life. Um, However, the kind of previous narratives on these uh, tattoos have been mostly from male scholars and have often portrayed the uh, women to be prostitutes and kind of put them at a lower status within ancient Egyptian society. So there were not many changing narratives because not many people are studying this topic. But I would kind of argue that because of the intentional mummification of them and the context with, within which they were found, that these women were of higher status whatever they were doing and therefore were tattooed, you know, relating to their status and identity. Um, so there's one final example which was found in 2014 uh, from the site of Deir el Medina and it's the first of its kind because it displays evidence of figurative tattoos. Um, however, this is just the mummified torso of a female, the head and the limbs are missing. There are around 30 tattoos upon the remains including lotus blossoms, baboons, cows, and the eye of Horus. So in the first photo, we have um, the neck, which is tattooed with the eye of Horus. And since this is a symbol of protection, it suggests that this was intended to protect this particular part of the body. So the, um, the narratives around this have been uh, regarding profession, that maybe she was a singer and wanted to protect her voice box. Um, and additionally, in funerary practices, the placing of amulets around the neck prior to mummification suggests that um, the tattooing of symbolic and protective iconography upon the body could be seen as a more guaranteed form of protection, since the tattoos are permanently inscribed within the skin, whereas amulets are just placed upon the body and therefore may be lost or looted during the journey into the afterlife. Um, in the second photo, we have... Uh, two cows facing each other, which may represent the goddess of Hathor, um, and there are also snakes upon her upper arms, but there are no photos of that one. Um, so this relates to female deities within ancient Egypt, and these give insight into the cosmological beliefs. So there may be um, certain vulnerabilities of the body, um, therefore the protective symbols are tattooed upon these regions and therefore remain preserved um, upon the skin after life and into afterlife, uh, after death and into afterlife, so they protect for eternity. We can be confident about the positioning and meaning of the tattoos upon the preserved bodies due to the significance and power of the written word within ancient Egypt, so what is written will come true. As seen within funerary context, the written word is how bodies uh, continue their existence and achieve their agency within the afterlife. So these preserved human remains provide insight into their apotropaic practices inscribed and incised within the skin of the body itself and the figurines with body decoration provide corroborative evidence to support this. So just some concluding points um, is that there are hopefully changing narratives into how these tattooed women are perceived um, within the academic community. Um, both the figurines and the physical body alike are protected through the practice of tattooing or decoration, which forces us to reevaluate bodily practices and how we view figurines themselves. Um, the mummified remains provide insight into how ancient Egyptian women modified their bodies and created their identities, reinforce power and protection upon themselves. The mummies provide evidence to suggest that figurines represent actual body decoration and tattooing of both pre-dynastic and dynastic women, even though we have a lack of pre-dynastic tattooed bodies themselves. Um, and the recurrent division of the body with particular parts of the body tattooed with similar symbols and decoration of both figurines and physical bodies show evidence of this. 
The tattoo symbols acted as everlasting amulets inscribed into the skin in order to remain dry and afterlife. <laughs> Brilliant.